Hi, this is James Grendel. And this is Darlington, South Carolina. Host to the first competitive sporting event in 10 weeks since the COVID-19 virus has taken its toll on the United States. Myself and my friend Karen Childers went down to see the Real Heroes 400. How South Carolina, NASCAR, and people in general would respond. And this is our experience. Well, as you can see, we uh, arrived perfectly right to the Star Spangled Banner by Hootie and the Blowfish singer uh, Darius Rucker. The Darlington Raceway Stock Car Museum focuses on the history of Darlington Raceway and the sport of stock car racing. The exhibits include race car history, memorabilia, and classic cars, including ones driven at Darlington by such famous race drivers as Richard Petty, Darrell Waltrip, and the 1950 Plymouth that Johnny Mance drove in the first Southern 500. The museum also features the National Motorsports Press Association Hall of Fame. Inductees include Alan Kulwicki, David Pearson, Junior Johnson, Lee Petty, Richard Petty, and Neil Bonnet. On May 11th, 1968, David Pearson would win at Darlington for the first time, but it would not be his only victory. The Spartanburg driver would go on to post a record 10 victories at Darlington Raceway during his Hall of Fame career. The museum was conceived by NASCAR race champion Joe Weatherly, who was killed in the NASCAR Cup Series race at Riverside International Raceway in 1964. The museum was dedicated to him in 1965. So on Sunday during the race, Convoy of Hope partner with local churches, businesses, community service, health organizations, the Joey Logano Foundation, NASCAR Foundation, Elevation Church of Charlotte, North Carolina, NASCAR CEO Jim France, volunteers, packed bags prepared for the families nearby, and distributed more than 30,000 pounds of supplies. They served over 800 families, food, cleaning products, and hygiene items, along with little speedy bears for the kids in the region. So big ups to doing some good deeds. Every car carried a healthcare worker name on it, and all of those workers got to address the nation via Zoom. Racers start your engines at the beginning of the race. Harold Bransington 
was a wealthy South Carolina peanut farmer turned lawyer. Went to the 1933 Indy 500, was impressed with racing and wanted to bring a 500 miler to South Carolina. Brasington had raced in Daytona in 1938 and was smitten with the racing bug. He bought a farm and a part of the deal was uh, whatever he did on the property couldn't impact his neighbor's minnow farm in the pond nearby. Not impact it, he misshapen the oval track and made an egg or started having problems with money to complete the track. Asked France to come in, look at it. He was took on his promoter, make sure the track could be completed. Groundbreaking on the speedway was in 1949 and in 1950. Darlington Raceway hosted a Labor Day race. The inaugural Southern 500, France even brought in the ringer Indy car racer Johnny Mance. Took the first checkered flag. There's no way a Plymouth could beat a Cadillac, but he knew that tires were going to be the important thing. He brought in special tires, and everyone else just destroyed tires. And a lot of people ran out of tires, ran out of money, buying tires in the parking lot. It was his idea to bring in the special tires. First race set a pattern for hard-earned victories and having to overcome extreme difficulty, heat, intensity, crashes with the high banks and speed. It's kicked off and now a NASCAR tradition older than Daytona 500 or Brickyard 400. It was a good 88, 89 degrees in the direct sunlight. Sunday is significantly different at night on Wednesday. Brasington would go on to assist to design Charlotte Motor Speedway before he would build his second track, which was Rockingham in North Carolina. Biggest change came in 97 when the decision was made to switch start finish to the back straight to allow for a creation of a larger main grandstand. Old hands at Darlington would spend the next few years confusing themselves with the corner names, which naturally also had to switch over. The old turn one became the new turn four, so on. Don't tell me NASCAR is not dangerous. Got the dudes up on the corner over here. Just a car hitting the railing. So it sparks over. We got fires just on the other side of the fence. We're welcoming back to social media. We're social distancing. Police keep everybody distance. Won't let people stay for very long, but. That looks sounds like they're finally doing a caution. I thought they would have had a caution earlier. I thought metal would have been on the track. We're watching from the, our iPad. Sweet excitement in the in the present. Late. I read that some parking lots around the park would be open. The property itself would be off limits to all but uh, NASCAR certified personnel. Some people came from all around the country, Chicago, West Virginia, uh, just to be in that environment. A lot of looky-loos. People drive around the track to look at it, roll down the windows, hear the sound, the vibrations. I was curious to see how it would smell and sound again after a good decade away living in the West Coast. You know, the volume was intense the whole race. And man, the sounds, the vibrations were as great, if not better than I remembered. Smells were a little distant since we were over the track, but it seemed like after pit stops, we get that burning fuel rubber smell, which was kind of enticing. Most of the time you expect to see a lot of NASCAR type of souvenirs. The only souvenirs that were out in the region were Trump folks. And then we found out well, those people even drove up from Florida to sell their Trump merchandise. The racetrack itself only permitted a few people in the press area, so a lot of press kind of outside showing up occasionally at the raceway. Real outside of turn two offered pretty mainstream selection of beers, traditional fried foods, stuff you'd expect around the racetrack. Cool memorabilia, a lot of Richard Petty, Kyle Petty, uh, every other table up and up, outdoor areas and space, holding a watch party with in sight in the back, which is pretty neat. We got to park nearby stayed in that particular section of the racetrack for most of the way. 50 car on the roof for 50 years of the restaurant opened in 1970, the racing track in 1950. Really not that many people came out. What I was surprised at probably the most was hear the clients and employees kind of bemoan issues, but yet none of them were wearing masks or protection. So that was a little bit disappointing for us to be patrons and Pretty much we're the ones protecting everyone else and no one else protecting themselves. I thought that was a little surprising, especially considering everyone within the racetrack 
uh, was doing so much to protect themselves and even took some flack when some spotters uh, got close together at one point during a part of the race. People were, whoa, they're close together, these spotters that hadn't been around human contact in four to 12 weeks. NASCAR promptly had them spread out. Just a lot of lost income uh, for these people down here with people not coming. And that didn't really have an impact on the race, but it tells me mostly that people are still nervous. People don't want to put themselves at risk. They still have fear. Right when I got there, I took my shirt off. It was really hot uh, to a t-shirt. People were I don't know. Like, oh, don't get close to us. Uh, just from getting out of the vehicle. Uh, that was an interesting moment. Again, whenever we went in and out of places, we kept our masks on, but we were generally so far from people, we didn't have to wear a mask. So what makes Darlington so special? The answer is history. Darlington has been around longer than Daytona International Speedway, Bristol Motor Speedway, Charlotte Motor Speedway, and Michigan International Speedway. Just to name a few of the major venues. I had a two-week qualifying format similar to Indy. There was only one hotel in town, so fans came the night before and slept on their cars around the town square. Some Darlington homes took in fans, setting up makeshift beds in front of homes. This was where infield racing kind of started. France let people into the infield early, in and out, in and out each day. And then France would run everybody out in the morning with firecrackers, fireworks. And infield used to be the home to the blockhouse, a cinder block jail for drunks put rubber down on the track to make traction. Early townspeople used to be urged to come drive their cars on the track uh, in the days before the race. Generally race 50 to 60,000 fans in the economy, bring in about 65 million. County's population's about 67,000. And this is the quickest turnaround in NASCAR history, going back to the same track in the same week. Harvick got his 50th overall victory, top 20 overall victories in NASCAR history. Uh, it's a second that win at Darlington. the 27th driver to have more than one victory at Darlington. His team have finished in the top 10 at Darlington every time they've raced. Pretty impressive stuff. The Lady in Black, the track too tough to tame.